let us take some simple problem to solve by matrix method i have taken a continuous beam with two spans only and a is fixed b is a support where beam is continuous and support c is the end moment both of them are on the simple one but this is simple of course beam is continuous so it will be treated as your rigid joint only and a is a support and c is a support so first of all you have to find out how many degrees of freedom so that we can select the coordinates required to solve this problem how many unknowns are there now so degrees of freedom if you look at this now support a is fixed you don't have any degrees of freedom here it is zero it cannot move in horizontal direction it cannot move in vertical direction and as well as rotation also so whereas if you come to this support b now it can move in horizontal direction and rotation also whereas at c also it can move in horizontal and rotation since we assume that support a is fixed there will be no horizontal translation of the member a b c so we neglect that horizontal movement of the beam in the axial direction once you neglect it you will get only two degrees of freedom that is the rotation at b and the rotation at c so for this problem now degrees of freedom will be equal to 2 they are nothing but your theta b and theta c i can put it here neglecting axial deformation axial means along the axis of the member we have to neglect it it means that the length of a b and b c does not change assuming this condition we can eliminate those two degrees of freedom the horizontal movement at b and the horizontal movement at c so we get only the two degrees of freedom that is the rotation at b and rotation at c that means your number of coordinates to be selected are only two now so they are nothing but these d1 and d2 the deformation at b and the deformation at c so the number of coordinates or two degrees of freedom is 2 your stiffness matrix size will be equal to 2 cross 2 because n is equal to 2 so for that we have to assume that these two rotational directions as your coordinate directions if you coordinate direction if you write it now let me take this beam a b c since there are two degrees of freedom here i'll put always assume the clockwise only as your coordinate 1 see that i am writing for the coordinate 1 means always with the circle so it means it is a coordinate direction 1 and at c the next coordinate that represent the rotation at c that is theta c that is coordinate 2 so you have two degrees of freedom two coordinates selected so this figure shows the coordinate directions coordinate directions so therefore now your displacement matrix you can fix it now therefore the displacement matrix D will be equal to D1 and D2 they are actually theta B and theta C. So once you get you know the stiffness relation now stiffness relation is p is equal to k into d so this is 2 cross 1 this is 2 cross 1 automatically your stiffness matrix will be 2 cross 2 so for the force matrix now p so if you have anything applied along the coordinate directions applied moment here couple if they give a moment here whether clockwise anti clockwise i have to take them into consideration in the case of force matrix that will be equal to pi minus pi l i represent number of 
coordinate directions here are only two, P1 and P2. If it is P1 here, this should be an applied moment in the given problem. Minus of P1 L means, is there any moment developed because of the applied load along this point B, along the coordinate 1, that should be added. Combination of these two, your force values, this force matrix combining of this Pi is equal to P1 and P2. Actually, the force matrix here now, force matrix, matrix P will be equal to P1 and P2 that is to be found out as P1 minus P1L, P2 minus P2L. These two are, the second column of them is all of them are due to applied load and this is, is there any particular couple applied at B and C along the coordinate directions 1 and 2 that needs to be considered. Now to find out this P1L and P2L, I have to find out the fixed term moments that you used to do it in your slope deflection moment distribution. Assuming AB as fixed beam, let us calculate MFAB, MFBA. Similarly, assuming BC as fixed beam, calculate MFBC and MFC. That step you know already. I am just calculating now. This is the actually the first step of calculation. These are all basics of your stiffness approach. Fixed end moments, MFAB is equal to minus MFBA. Why I am putting it is minus and plus here because it is symmetrically loaded now. AB is symmetrically placed with a point load now. The equation is minus WL by 8 minus 60 into L is 6 divided by 8. So that is equal to minus 45 kilo Newton meter. That means MFAB is minus 45, MFBA is plus 45. So coming to second beam, MFBC is also equal to minus MFCB because load is symmetrically placed UDL over the entire span. The equation is small w L square by 12 minus 10 into L is 6 square divided by 12. So it is equal to I think 30. It is minus 30 kilo Newton meter. So MFBC is minus 30, MFCB is plus 30. We have calculated the fixed end moments for the members AB and BC separately. We have to use them to find out P1L and P2L. Your P1L, P1 corresponds to your coordinate direction 1 and L corresponds to your applied load. So at B, I have two values of fixed end moment. One is from AB, other one is from BC. So it is MFBA plus MFBC together will be your P1L. So this is MFBA plus MFBC. What is MFBA? MFBA is minus and minus it is plus 45 and MFBC is minus 30. So it is equal to plus 15 kilo Newton meter is the value of P1L. So let me take P2L now. P2L, look at the direction here that is at C, you will get only end moment at that point that is equal to MF. CB that is equal to minus minus it is plus 30 kilo Newton meter. So due to applied load along the direction of the coordinates we got both the values of the moments that is force move matrix part of it plus 15 and plus 30 and I need to get this value of P1 and P2 is there any load applied that means couple applied at B and C if there is nothing is there then it will be equal to 0. Why I am putting 0 is there is no applied moment, no applied moment at coordinate 1 and coordinate 2. I am putting the value as coordinate 1 and 2 as within the circle 1 and 2. So we got this value now. I can put it P1 is 0 minus of P1L is 30 or 15, it will become minus 15. P2 is 0, again minus of P2L is 30, it is also minus 30. So therefore now I can put it in a P force matrix is 0 minus 
15 0 minus 30 that is equal to minus 15 and minus 30. I know the unknown values theta b, theta c here, theta b and theta c d1, d2. I got the force values p1 and p2. Now, if I get k, I can easily calculate the value of d. So, your displacement that is stiffness matrix, we have to find the coefficients to arrive the stiffness matrix now. that is k 2 cross 2. So, 2 cross 2 means you will get totally 4 elements. So, all the 4 let me calculate now. To develop the stiffness matrix, let me first take first step. That means, there are 2 columns. First column elements you can find out by locking all other points except the rotation along the coordinate direction 1. So, provide unit rotation along coordinate 1. I am not writing coordinate 1, I am putting in the circle. That means in the bracket it is theta b equal to 1. So, coordinate 1 is the direction of the rotation at b that is theta b equal to 1 and find the moment developed at all other points. So, it means now, let me put this into figure now, and A is already fixed, and C I have to make it as fixed at B. I have to give a rotation now in the clockwise direction, that is the direction of your coordinate. So, I have given it clockwise direction, and this moment that is theta B equal to 1. Similarly, you have on either side theta b equal to 1. So, to be specific, all the three joints are fixed rigidly. Then, I have given a moment or sorry, applied a moment in such a way that there should be a rotation of theta b equal to 1. Using this figure, I can able to find out the elements of the stiffness matrix k11. What is k11 now? It is the force in general. Here it is actually moment developed along the coordinate 1 due to unit rotation along 1. At also you can put it at coordinate 1 and along the coordinate 1. So, that we already now k11 because of the moment near in moment it is equal to actually it is mf mba plus mbc that is equal to we know that it is near end moment developed it is 4ei by l plus 4ei by l from the span bc and from the span b. What is the value of L here? In this case, both the spans are 6 and 6 meters. So, I can put it 4 plus 4 is 8 Ei by 6 or I can take it as 4 Ei by 3 K11. Let me put K21 now. Again, it is also moment developed. along coordinate 2 due to unit rotation along 1. The same figure I have rotated through a unit value at B. I have to find out the moment induced at C. We know here the moment induces in the same direction. It is half of the value at the near end. Here it is 4 Ei by L and here it will be 2 Ei by L. So, that is equal to now nothing but MCB that is equal to 2 EI by L into slope that is slope is 1, 2 EI by 6. So, it is equal to EI by 3. So, we got K11 
and K21, both. The first column elements we have found and let us move to the second part to find out the values of the second column elements. Provide unit rotation along the next coordinate that is second coordinate. So let me put this into this figure and see that at all other points A and B it is fixed and the rotation in the clockwise direction only this much there will be no effect of this rotation on the other span here what we give is equal to 1 that is nothing but is theta c equal to 1 it is fixed. So restrained all the joints and then move a rotation of theta c equal to 1 at c so this will be the deformed shape of the member and you can calculate now k12 what is k12 again it is force developed in general now it is moment developed at coordinate 1 due to unit rotation along coordinate 2. So unit rotation along coordinate 2 and this is the near end 1 and this is the far end. Far end is again 2A by L and this one is 4A by L. So particularly this one is nothing but equal to MBC. So here we have added both MBA plus MBC whereas MBA is 0. You don't any movement in there in this side AB. Only possibility is this one. So it is to be specific it is also MBA plus MBC since this is 0 it is equal to 2 EI by L. L is again 6 so that is equal to EI by 3. You can see now your K21 is exactly equal to K1. That is another check for you during the calculation. It should be same. It cannot be different. If there is a difference means you have done some mistake in the calculations or the basic step itself is wrong. So why it is equal? We already told in the earlier class that symmetric that stiffness matrix is always symmetrical. Kij equal to Kji. And next one is K22. It is again moment developed at coordinate 2 due to unit rotation along the same coordinate to itself. So it is K22 is equal to at this point you have only one value of the moment induced because it is the end support MCB near end value it is 4 EI by L that is 4 EI by L is 6 so it is 2 EI by Three. So you have the values now and use the stiffness relation using the stiffness relation now Pi minus PIL that is equal to K into D. This part we already done left hand side, you can put it directly. What is the value? It is minus 15 and minus 30. That is equal to, I will take out EI outside because you have EI from all the four terms. What is K11? K11 is 4 by 3. This is 1 by 3, 1 by 3 and 2 by 3. We have displacement matrix D1 and D2. 
or to simplify further you can take out this ei by 3 here or you can simply put 4112 so you can easily solve it by using your calculators inverse this matrix multiplied by your p1 and p2 you will get the values so to be specific now it is ei by 3 I will take it D1 and D2 that is equal to 4, 1, 1, 2 inverse of minus 15, minus 30. EI D1 will be equal to 0. and ei d2 is equal to minus 45 they are nothing but ei theta b and this is ei theta c we started the deformation matrix d1 equal to theta b d2 equal to theta c you have ei d1 and ei theta 2 final values we got it 0 and 45 minus ei theta b is 0 ei theta c is minus 45 once you get this values then you just go back to your slope deflection approach how to find the final moments once you are done with the deformations and the deflections you have the equation general equation m a b is equal to m f a b plus 2 e i by l in the bracket 2 times of theta a plus theta b minus 3 delta by l we know there is no sinking of supports in this problem it is equal to 0 and we also know that support a is fixed theta a is 0 now what is the value of mfab mfab is i think it is minus 45 plus 2 by l is 6 i'll take out ei theta b ei theta b is 0 theta b value is 0 so the answer is minus 45 kilo newton meter so next end moment is same member right side mba is the same equation a simplified equation write it mfba plus 2a by l i'll put two times of theta b because theta a is 0 delta is 0 so it is equal to now plus 45 plus 2 by 6 into 0 that is equal to plus 45 if we take the second span mbc it is mfbc plus 2a by l two times of theta b plus theta c i have not written delta here because there is no sinking here theta b is already zero we know this value is minus 45 how much is mf bc we got yeah minus 30 plus 2 by 3 ei theta c ei theta c is 6 meters 6 means 6 7.5 i think 67 plus yeah 30 2 into 7.5 is minus 15 minus is there minus 30 the value is minus 45 kilo newton meter you can see mba plus mbc is zero and the final one you can just simply use the equation you'll we'll see what you will get mfcb plus 2 ei by 6 theta b plus 2 times of theta c this is plus 30 2 by 6 2 into minus 
so it is 2 3 is a 3 15 into 2 is minus 30 plus 30 this should be equal to 0 it is 0 because we know the end c is simple and the moment final moment should be equal to 0 so we are getting it is equal to 0 once you get these values you can mark them on the beam m a b is minus 45 anti clockwise kilo newton meter m b a is plus 45 m b c is minus 45 i can put it here 45 kilo newton meter and the final one m c b i can mark it as zero so these are the n moments developed because of the applied load and the approach we used is your stiffness approach. So rest of the procedure is same as your earlier methods. To sketch the bending moment diagram and shear force diagram and elastic curve, we need to consider the free body diagram of AB and BC. Let me do it for this problem. So rest of the problems you can do it yourself. Free body diagram of AB. So we need to find the reactions and as well as the positive moment developed within the beam in between A and B. So AB is a span of 6 meters subjected to a point load of 60 kilo Newton. Let me take at A reaction as RA, at B let me take the reaction as partial reaction RBA because you will get another portion of the reaction from the other side of the member BC and we know this is 3 meters and we have the applied developed moment here 45 kilo Newton meter clockwise and 45 kilo Newton meter clockwise and anti-clockwise. So if you take the moment about A equal to 0 treating positive for the clockwise moments you have 60 into 3 it is clockwise plus 45 minus 45 minus RBA into distance to that reaction is 6 meters it is equal to 0 so 45 45 gets cancels 16 to 3 divided by 6 therefore RBA is exactly equal to 30 kilo Newton and it is acting upwards because both the end moments are same one is positive other one is negative half of the load is transferred to the one end so therefore using the other condition of equilibrium sigma fy I can directly write Ra is also equal to 30 kilo Newton total load is 60 minus this 30 it is 30. So if you put the shear force diagram of this, both of them is 30 kilo Newton here and this one is also 30 kilo Newton. You will get the shear force diagram for this segment of the beam now. 30 acting upwards the reaction, transfer this point, it is constant, so the value is 30 kilo Newton. If you come down by 60, it will transfer to the negative side 30 and it is constant it is also 30 you can see there is a reaction here up to upwards of the magnitude 30 it is plus and this is minus and this is the point where the shear force is changing its sign it is exactly under the point load let me take this point as p to sketch bending moment diagram we need this point so let me calculate now Bending moment at P, we know the direction already and the distance also from the supports, it is 3 meters. Either side you can take it. MP, let me take left or right. So it is 30 into 3 clockwise, positive bending moment left hand side, minus 45, the moment acting at A, M, A, B. So 90 minus 45 is. 45 kilo Newton meter. 
So it will be always positive unless the loading directions are different, it will be always positive. So we got the shear force diagram and as well as the point where the maximum bending moment you will get, you are located, incidentally it is the point of the load, so we got the final value. So these three values we can use it to sketch SFD and B. So let me take the free body diagram of BC also. Again span is 6 meters, B, C, 6 meters. Now I can call this reaction as R, B, C and this reaction as R, C and it is subjected to an UDL of 10 kilo Newton per meter and I have an anti-clockwise moment of 45 kilo Newton meter, of course here it is zero. So same steps, take moment about any of the point MB equal to zero, ten into six into six by two, the UDL of length six meters, intensity is ten, ten into six, acts at a distance of half of the distance. Since edge of the UDL is at P, it is six by two minus 45 because you have an anti-clockwise moment acting on the beam anywhere on the beam you have to consider minus RC into 6 equal to 0. Therefore RC is equal to now how much it will be now 6 3 is 18 into 10 180 minus 45 135 135 divided by 6 is the point. 22.5. Again we are getting positive values, so it is acting upwards. Use the other equation of equilibrium, sigma Fy equal to 0, Rbc plus Rc minus 10 into 6 equal to 0. Applying this equilibrium equation, sigma Fy, RBC plus RC minus 10 into 6 UDL acting downwards equal to 0. RBC now 60 is total minus 32.5, it is 37.5 kilo Newton. Again, this one is also acting upwards. You can mark them here. This is 37.5 and this one is 22.5. Again, we need to sketch the shear force diagram to know how it varies and to locate the point of maximum bending moment also. 37.5 reaction acting upwards at B and the total UDL acts downwards. How much is the total now? It is 60 in a length of 6 meters. For every meter, there will be 10 kilo Newton downwards. So, it goes to 22.5 at the other end. And we know there is a reaction of 22.5 here. So this is positive and negative and we need to locate this point where it is changing. Let me take this as Q. The shear force is not changing at midpoint. We do not know where it is changing. Let me locate this from the nearest support at a distance of X where the shear force is changing its sign. So to find out that now. I can use the equation that Fx equal to 0. Shear force at x should be equal to 0, either left or right. So since I have taken x from right side, let me take it the shear force towards right side. Otherwise, on the to the left it is 6 minus x. So what are the vertical forces? By the definition of shear force, it is algebraic sum of vertical forces to the right of the section now, 22.5 acting upwards and downwards. 10 kN per meter over a length of 6 meters. So downwards is positive 10 into 6 sorry x minus of 22.5 that is equal to 0 therefore x equal to 2.25 meters from where it is 
from C. That means from A it is around 3.75 out of 6 minus 2.25 it is 3.75. So let me find out therefore moment at Q again I will take right side because I have already found the distance that distance is equal to 2.25 meters. So what are the forces acting to the right? I have RC and the portion of the UDL you do not have moment, moment is 0. So RC is 22.5 into distance 2.25. It creates an anti-clockwise moment to the right side is positive any moment minus 10 into distance is 2.25 from the edge of that point and acts at a distance of 2.25 divided by 2. So since there is no moment induced because it is a simple end, so it is equal to 0. So sum of these two will be equal to 25.31 kilo Newton meter. So from AB we got the reactions here for diagram and the final moment positive and from BC we got the reactions here for diagram and the, the moment developed within the span 25.31. Use these values now. Combination of the two shear force diagrams of AB and BC, you can get the total shear force diagram of the continuous beam itself. 30 constant comes down to minus 30 constant goes up above the reference line 37.5 and then it is 22.5. That means the total reaction at B combining the components from A, B and B, C it is 30 plus 37.5, it is 67.5 and the reaction at A is 30, reaction at C is 22.5. If we add all these three reactions 30, 67.5 and 22.5, total load should be equal to the reactions here 60 plus 60, 120, all the four components together is also equal to 120. And here I can mark above the reference is minus, below the reference line is plus. Always keep a habit of hatching these diagrams to show that bending moment is different than the shear force diagram. Shear force we hatch it along the edge of the boundary. This is your shear force diagram. So if you take the bending moment values now. I will be marking the bending moments on the tension side or the arrow side, arrow downwards. End moments, generally arrow will be downwards unless you have sinking of supports or some other end conditions it will be different, otherwise it will be always negative, end moments are always negative. So how much it is here, 30, 45 and here also it is. 45 kilo Newton meter, 45 kilo Newton meter, of course, here it is equal to 0. And over this, you have to mark the positive values. Positive value at P it is 45, and at Q it is around 25. Point so look at the loading pattern on the beam, you do not have any load between A and P, P and B also and of course here you have continuous UDL, we know this variation now it is from A to B it is linear and P to B is also linear whereas from B through Q to C it is parabolic, second order curve. So whatever the diagram above the reference line is positive, below is negative, positive and negative. And 
And this positive negative is very important because you will be studying your RCC design of the beams. There you should be very careful. Negative bending moment means you have to provide the reinforcement at the top of the beam. And positive bending moment means sagging bending moment. You need to provide the actual reinforcement designed at the bottom of the beam. So this completes your SFD and BMD. You can see the difference of hatching here from SFD and BMD. Let me sketch the elastic curve also that will give an indication how the deformation occurs after the loading and it indicates your pattern of reinforcement also. A, B, C and where it is changing its sign, the bending moment. It changes the sign at two points in between A and B, one to the left of B and right of B, and here it changes only at one point near the support B. Those points approximately you can mark it here. That means that is the point of contra flexor. That means the flexor on left and right are different nature. That's why we call it contra means opposite. So it is, here the moment is, sorry, the slope is zero. Your elastic curve starts horizontally, then starts bending downwards. And again it goes up. You can see there is also zero slope at B. Theta B is zero. Again it comes downwards. You can see now your curve goes directly to C without bending. So these are the points of You can observe here between these two points sagging bending moment. Here it is hogging. Again between these two points it is hogging. Here it is Just to clarify how this be useful in your design subjects, I have taken a beam longitudinal section. You can see wherever it bends downwards, there we require the reinforcement at the bottom. Of course, we provide a bar continuous that is to hold your anchor bars or the stirrups. And you can see it is hogging portion, you will have reinforcement at the top. So that indicates your diagrams and your elastic curve shows that you have to provide the reinforcement at particular positions for a given